Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I take a look at the TID Radio TD DP580 UHF DMR handheld. What do I think of this little radio? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. There's no shortage to DMR handheld radios on the market. I think, you know, we're at the point where you should be able to find a DMR or digital mobile radio transceiver at a price point and feature set that meets your wants and needs. A newer entry into the market is the TID Radio TD DP580. It's a UHF analog and DMR handheld transceiver. And I, at this point, I want to wish to thank TID Radio for supplying me with this unit to review. So, you know, let's take a look at the TD DP580 UHF uh, DMR handheld radio. Well, the specs of the TD DP580 include its UHF 400 to 470 megahertz analog and DMR transceiver. It's DMR tier one and tier two compatible. Uh, transmit power of one and four watts. Uh, 999 channels. It's got a 1600 milliamp hour lithium ion battery and an 18 hour battery life. Opening up the box, you get a lot with the TD DP580. You know, the radio comes with all the standard things you would expect, like the transceiver itself, antenna, battery, um, charger, a uh, little wrist strap. And then there's some um, things that um, are often left out with some other brands, including um, you get a programming cable, standard, a speaker mic, and also a high gain antenna that appears to be a clone of the Nagoya NA771. So you get quite a lot for your money, even though this radio is really at the bottom of the price scale for DMR handheld radios. That alone, you know, should be enough uh, for some people to choose the TDDP580 as their first DMR radio, as everything you need is in the box. Looking at the radio, you know, it's quite small itself. You know, I think this is one of the smallest uh, DMR radios that I've reviewed and have lined it up against some of the other uh, models that I've, I've looked at, such as Radio Oddities, um, RD73, uh, the Redivis RT3S, and the Alliance HD1. You know, this should kind of give you an idea of its relative size and scale against some of the other radios on the market. You know, I really like a compact radio, and this one fits you know, fairly well in the hand. Uh, the radio itself has uh, power on and a volume knob on the, on the top. Uh, turn it around to look at its sides. Uh, there's a flap where underneath is the uh, speaker mic and uh, programming cable connections. And on the other side is the uh, push to talk button and one programmable button. Uh, the front of the radio sports a full keypad and it has a backlight uh, monochrome LCD display. The text on the display is crisp and readable, although it's a little bit small. Uh, the battery uh, attaches in the back and uh, you can also add on the screw-on belt clip. All in all, this radio is really no bigger than, you know, I'd say, a bar of soap. The first step to using the radio is to program it, and the biggest challenge I had was getting a copy of the programming software. It's not on uh, TID Radio's website, even though they do have a download page, but the link is dead and uh, downloads nothing. So after a few emails, I did get um, links to the programming software and the USB drivers sent to me. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include a, cop, uh, a link to those um, drivers and software right on the video description below. So if you're interested in this radio, you can uh, find an easy spot to download those um, necessary applications. Uh, once, I, once I got the, the software, I had no problem installing the USB driver in the software. Everything worked um, on my Windows 10 system, and the program was up and running. As a standard practice, when I program a radio for the first time, I will read the file from the radio and save a clean copy of it. Then if anything gets hosed, you can always go back to, to that good file. I also found that working you know, with this file um, by adding and editing channels in it um, is a much safer way to program the radio as um, the, you won't run into any um, unexpected kinks or anything like that in, in, in writing your program. 
I don't think the software is any better or worse than any other DMR programming software out there. They're all kind of putsy. And I've got a video on DMR programming that takes you through those steps if you've never done it before. So you may want to check that out. Otherwise, uh, the, the standard procedure is to go into um, the general settings and enter your DMR ID and then uh, work through the process of adding your contacts, zones, and then the channels. Uh, the DP580 software is a little different in that the channels were uh, laid out in a spreadsheet format. Uh, so this is, uh, it's kind of nice, uh, but it's also a little bit frustrating as uh, the spreadsheet doesn't have all the information on it. So you're going to need to scroll to the end of, of each line on the spreadsheet, and then you click on those little arrows to open up uh, the screen, and there'll be more channel information such as the uh, time slot and the receive list, etc. You know, this kind of slows the process down a little bit. Um, another downside is that you can't copy and paste channels, uh, so every channel has to be entered by hand. You know, this is sort of time consuming as a repeater may have, you know, six or more talk groups. So each talk group is going to need its own channel and you're going to have to enter all of that information in by hand. Well, the software does have the ability to export and import contacts and channels, but and, and it appears to support in Microsoft Excel format. I think I'm going to have to export a file from this, uh, the, the TD580 program, uh, analyze it, figure out its format, and then do some editing to see if I can get it to import from another um, DMR uh, program ap application. Yeah, I didn't really have any time to um, rev uh, work on that before this review, so I'll probably do an update on that in my next Your Questions Answered video. Using the radio itself is not too difficult. As I said before, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve with DMR, but once you get over that huge hump of programming it, uh, the radio, you know, everything else with the radio is, is fairly easy. Uh, the, the DP580 menu system is, you know, fairly straightforward. Uh, pressing the green button on the front keypad brings up the menu system. Uh, you can view contacts, uh, messages, uh, a call log if anybody did a private call to you. Uh, if there, you can enter stations, other stations DMR ID numbers into the front keypad and uh, make a call, a private call to that person. Um, that's kind of a neat feature. Another neat feature is uh, the built-in FM radio receiver. Uh, you can listen to your favorite radio station while the transceiver monitors uh, your DMR channel in the background. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the menu system as the um, selecting the zones were buried um, deep into the radio settings menu. And that, you know, that's really not the worst thing that I've, I've, I've seen, but um, it's kind of inconvenient because, um, you know, one of the reasons you have different zones is, is sort of organize your channels. You know, say a repeater may have a half a dozen or more talk groups, and you're going to want to put all of those, say, all of those talk groups for the repeater in its own zone. Um, and, you, maybe the, and maybe they do the same thing with all your analog channels into a zone and all your hotspot channels into a zone. It just makes the organization a lot neater. Uh, the, the DP580 was nice in that you could have any number of channels in a zone. Many other uh, DMR handhelds may limit you to 16 channels per zone, so uh, there's an advantage there. You could make one big zone with everything in it, uh, but now you've got an organizational nightmare. So um, if there was easier zone selection for this radio, I think that would be a really nice um, winning point. Another nice feature is that you can program the radio from the keypad. Uh, so if you have trouble finding or downloading the software, you can at least add channels and um, make changes uh, to the radio itself you know, right from the radio's keypad. You know, frankly, I've never programmed a radio from scratch uh, this way on the keypad, but I have made um, channel adjustments and edits and changes uh, via the, key the keypad. So it's a nice feature to have. But one downside is that I'm going to note is that the radio came to me with all of the default settings in the Chinese language. So it was impossible for me to navigate on this radio until I was able to um, make the change to the English language via software and then download that to the radio. You know, this may be due to me receiving an early version of the radio. So, you know, I hope that they'll have this um, fixed in uh, future revisions. So let's get into the things I like about the TID Radio TD-DP580. First off, it's small size and ergonomic feel. Like I said, I like, I like smaller radios, so it, it felt fairly decent in the hand. It's got a long battery life, they say up to 18 hours. 
more than, you can put in more than 16 channels per zone, which is nice. It's keypad programmable. And it also comes with a full kit of accessories, such as your high gain antenna, speaker mic, and a programming cable. They're all included. But contrast to that, some of the things I don't like about the DP580. It's software and drivers. Well, you know, so the TID website is incomplete and uh, the programming software was not there. I had to request the links to the software emailed to me. Um, I did put the links uh, for the DP580 programming software into the video description below um, so that you can download them also. Uh, zone selection is buried under the radio settings menu, so it's not front and center uh, to easily select a zone. Uh, no separate uh, contact database. All of your contacts for private calls and group calls are all grouped into one big um, list. And, you know, my radio was um, sent to me with the Chinese language set as a default. If it was set for um, English, I would have um, really appreciated that much, uh, much better as it would have made the initial um, getting started with this radio a lot quicker. You know, I feel the ideal customer for the TID radio TDDP580 would probably be those that use um, DMR via hotspot. Uh, since this radio is UHF only, you know, it isn't going to be a replacement to your everyday dual band um, handheld transceiver. Although it does offer analog support, so you can use it as an, as an analog radio. It is inexpensive enough that I think that it would be an okay choice for, you know, for a first um, DMR radio. Especially if your access to DMR is going to be via a UHF repeater or a hotspot. Uh, the programming software was no better or no worse than anything else out there. So there's no advantage to that. Um, its price point is uh, really nice. It's not overly expensive. Uh, so if you wish to, you know, dip your toes into uh, the DMR market, uh, this might be the way to go. Uh, the big question is, would I buy one? Well, based on uh, the look and feel and the price, you know, I think I'm, I'd give this one a fighting chance. It's better than some of the other uh, DMR handhelds I've reviewed that are in the, in the sub $100 price range. So what are your thoughts on the TID Radio TDDP580 DMR UHF transceiver? You know, leave a comment below. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. And I'll filter through the uh, questions and comments, answer any of the questions that I, that I can. Uh, maybe even one of your questions will end up on my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So uh, if you like this video, you can always give me the big thumbs up. Uh, you can check out some of the recommended videos alongside me here. And as always, if you've watched this far and you enjoy uh, amateur radio stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and the bell notification will inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.